Hi everybody, so we're here with Mr. Destin and he's going to explain how the fishermen go about storing their freshly caught fish at sea as well as the importance of storing the fish so that they can bring it back to land for consumers to buy and what is the right way to do so. Go ahead Mr. Destin. Well the best thing you have to do is just carry your igloo with your eyes. It's one thing when you catch the lobster, you don't put it in the igloo with the eyes. They die quick. Quick, okay. quick. They're dead. But you don't put the lobster in the igloo with the eyes. You put the lobster different and keep it in a cool place. But well, like the fish now, any one of the fish, you can throw it in your igloo, keep your eyes in there as much as ice what you can carry. Just carry it with you and keep your fish them cool. So, Mr. And Destin, you speak of the ice, right? Yeah. taking the ice out there yeah. so you could preserve your fish yeah. what type of ice is there a specific ice that you have to use it's just the ice that you freeze okay just in your fridge say it way. you don't have no special ice you just throw water in a bucket or throw into a bag and you just tie it up and put it in your freezer so let me ask you now how how does the fish react once it's on ice well the fish is more fresher the fish is more easier to scrape and you don't find no spoiled fish. Every time the fish that eat, remember, you know, fish is scavenger. So the fish may eat a small fish and it's in the belly for a good time. And you don't know that. So if you throw it in the boat and the sun catch it, it will spoil. Quick, quick, pan. You okay, so once you catch plant. the fish and you put it in the when boat. you catch the fish, put it in the igloo, you know, then now you have a fresh fish. When you come in, and you to scrape the fish, the fish more easy to scrape. When the sun burns in the fish, it's harder to scrape. It's harder? Yeah, when the sun burns the fish, it's still hard to come out. But okay. from the tended igloo, where the ice is, as you put your knife or your rake on it, the fish come out, the fish scale come out easy, easy. Easy, easy. And some people ask me, say, how many fish they so easy to scrape? I told them that it's the ice what I put on my fish you know in the igloo so it's more easier to scrape so let me ask you let's say a fisherman going out and he doesn't have ice how long you think the person can stay out there with the fish he will, before reaching the land well he can stay more than 12 o'clock okay that they don't make the sun catch the fish them too much well some people can touch and cover the fish but i don't bother with those things that don't help me much you okay know, I just buy an igloo get ice and carry it with me and those things that serve me. If you even broke down out there and you have your ice and your igloo, your fish don't spoil. If I'm even six o'clock you reach land and you have your igloo with your ice and thing, your fish don't spoil. But if you broke down out there and you don't have an igloo, your fish spoil. Okay, so it's important for fishers to take their igloo. Every fisherman do take an igloo to see with their eyes. And okay. it serve you long and the fish must be fresher. Okay. So ice is very essential in preserving yes. the fish. So let me ask you, before they were igloo, what would, what would the fishers generally use? How they would go about storing their fish now before igloo well, and ice? Well, first time fishermen used to leave from here from all them 5.30, go to sea. So they come in back early, but they can't touch with them and cover their fish. But okay. since we come in the business now and we find so it's much easier to carry the igloo and the ice, and you can stay a good little time, you know, so it's much better for we. Okay, so bringing the igloo out there, it's better because you have the ice and the igloo Bro, store the fish. Yeah, but one thing, when you catch the lobster, you don't chew it into the igloo. Okay. They die quick from the ice. Okay, the lobster die quick from the ice? Yeah. And it will spoil? No, they're not going to spoil, but when the lobster dies, some people don't like it. Some okay. people like to see the lobster moving. When okay. they're gonna buy the lobster. So why is it that they don't like when it's dead? No, some people don't like buy dead crab, you know. So fish lobster is near to crab. <laughs> okay, so they prefer it to be live. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but the fish storing it on ice is a must. Yes. Okay, and once you're going out there, you have your igloo. Fishers have your igloo. Good. Mr. Destin says that the igloo is important. Sure. So you should have your igloo. So let us talk about you coming on land with the fish that is being stored on ice and the persons coming in to buy the fish how would you recommend they travel with their fish going on like you have persons who come to the beach on a daily basis to get fish yeah those fish would have been preserved on the ice coming from the ocean to the land yeah. how would you recommend consumers to travel with fish that is coming off ice how long can they travel with a fish like that 
well from the fish scrape they take the belly from the fish and thing if they don't stay a long time with it and thing they can serve them up till about all them one two o'clock three o'clock okay you know so you said the belly of the fish that's the a gut the fish, so that's a, that's an issue yeah for spoiling yeah, of the fish the fish will eat another smaller fish and the belly that down there it start to decay when well, you don't know that all right so let me ask you some fishers would go to sea and they would remove the belly and they store the fish on the ice do you think that is a good practice yeah it's a good thing why is it a good practice but the, remember it's the belly start to spoil the fish first okay so when they remove the belly now the fish will escape harder so you don't spoil okay so let me ask you let's say the fish belly or the gut of the fish that's the intestine spoil the fish right um does it smell does it smell in the fish like let's say you're going to cook it no it don't smell you know but when you taste it when you cook the fish and start to eat my old man would say it's short okay you know it's spoiled so my old man would say it's short okay but, you know i know but it's spoiled and some people say it's short okay so the gut has to be removed yes but isn't it an issue where the gut is removed some fishers don't want to remove the gut because you know yeah, that they get more weight okay so you think that it is a good practice well, listen, you know, if you have the short road to go, you take, but if it's a long road, it's better to take the belly from the fish. Okay, for consumers. You're right. All right, so fishers who are out there and catching the gut, you should try and remove. But then it's depending on the location that right. they're fishing from. If your journey is far. You have to remove you the remove belly. It. But if it's but close. If you turn it near where you don't have to, the, so you have the ice, you don't have to move it in the glue, you don't have to move it. All right, so you hear that, guys? So thanks for watching. Mr. Destin, thank you very much. Yes, miss. All right, so tell everybody bye. Bye. All right, thanks, Jamaica. I hope you learned something. Bye, everybody.